Hey guys, we're back working on the 12-foot Naden skiff and my new-to-me boat trailer. And uh, today I think we're going to see if we can get some bearing buddies put on this thing. My local hardware store has three sizes of bearing buddies. These are the ones I picked up. They're a 1.98. I did measure across the bearing cap before I went to the store, and it looked to me to be pretty well two inches. So I'm hoping the 1.98 is the right size. <laughs> well, I don't think that's a milkshake. I think that's just brown grease. I don't know, it looks to be the right size to me. We're gonna get these uh, plastic covers off. And the way these work is a kind of a piston. Uh, the piston's completely collapsed right now. And you fill this area up with grease, and uh, as it builds up pressure, it comes up, uh, the piston comes up, and it kind of creates pressure, forcing the grease down into the bearing. I don't know how much grease is left in this gun, but we'll uh, do some pumping here and see if we can get this to start uh, firming up. Starting to move. And you can see we started to get some uh, leak out when we fill up. On a boat trailer, the main reason that you would go with bearing buddies is uh, obviously the wheels are going to be getting dunked into the water every time you use the boat. And uh, this helps keep pressure inside the, uh, inside the hub to keep moisture out, keeps your bearings from rusting. I was a little bit concerned by the color of this grease. At first it kind of looked almost like it's rusty, but it is actually just brown grease. Odd, uh, odd choice, but that works. Now that we've got this side put together, we need to get the other side done. Let me uh, get that put together and I'll bring you guys back and uh, then we'll continue working on a couple of other things with the setup. I don't know how it shows up for you guys in there, but you can see there's a little drop of water in this one. Um, as I said, the whole purpose of the bearing buddy is to keep water from getting in there. I don't think there's any problem with the, uh, the bearing or any of that stuff, but uh, We'll get this bearing buddy on in some fresh grease and hopefully that'll solve the problem. Got the second wheel put together. This one uh, needed a little bit heavier hammer to get it to, uh, to seat. It just didn't want to pop in there with the ball peen hammer. But uh, that and a chunk of two by four as a pad definitely uh, got it to seat quickly. Got a pump full of grease and we should be good. On to the next step here. We're going to uh, see about getting any water that may be accumulated in here. Pull the drain plug out and we'll see what's behind it. Hopefully it's just oil. Yeah, no water there. That's good. I'm 
I'm not sure if that is a, uh, a level check or whether that is a shift fork holder. I don't necessarily want to pull it out of there without knowing for sure. Usually if it's a level check you've got, uh, you've got a similar style plugged one for the oil. So I think that is probably the uh, shift fork. This unit does have a shifter in it. It's got neutral and forward rather than neutral forward and reverse but uh, the motor spins around that's reverse. Next step is I want to get it running. Unfortunately with this design there's not a really a way that you can put muffs on it. Uh, considering the muffs are I guess bigger than the, uh, the base of the motor. So what we've got here is my test tank garbage can. Looks like it should work. Let me get a garden hose out and we'll throw a little bit of uh, water up over that and see what happens. Use the uh, pre-mixed ethanol free fuel just uh, in case this doesn't get run a whole lot at least we'll have the good stuff in there. I do have a uh, fairly good sized jug of um, mixed fuel that if I'm going to use this much will get consumed but for testing purposes we'll just put a little bit of the good stuff in there. cover off, make sure there's no critters living in there. Pull the garden hose so that doesn't get wrapped around the prop. Here's our fuel shut off, put it on position. That's the choke. We are in neutral. it just a little bit of throttle. That's our kill switch. Oh, fuel is already on. Okay. Well, let's see what it does. This time than it did the uh, first time I fired it up, but it starts up, it seems to run, slide it down nice, goes into gear. That's promising. One thing we want to do here, since this is going to stay on the boat sometimes, is I think I want to put a padlock on it. Not the highest quality padlock or anything, but there's our padlock. We've got the uh, clamp handles close together. And just loop the padlock through. got it locked on. Is that going to stop somebody that's really bound and determined to uh, get that uh, 
motor off of there. No, uh, let's be honest, locks basically just uh, slow honest people down. If somebody really wanted to do that, it would take next to nothing to uh, cut those handles off and walk away with the motor. But down in here, she's kind of a little grungy. I think what I'm going to do is uh, go get myself some spray nine and some paper towel. And we'll give the inside of that just a little bit of a wipe down. This thing's in such nice shape under the cowl already. It'd be nice to keep it that way. And then I will continue on with the outside because that is also a little grungy. Well, I'll bring you back when I got the stuff and uh, we'll do a little bit of a time lapse. I'll let you listen to some more music. choke on. Throttle is set to the start position or neutral. Let me give this a little tug. See how easy it starts now. Now we'll let it run until it runs out of gas. That went okay. The telltale seems to be uh, spraying all over the place, but it is that definitely is where the telltale is supposed to come out. So I don't know what's causing that, but I think we'll call that a success. It seems to be running good. Now that we've got the boat on a trailer, hopefully we can actually get some use out of it this year. I really wish this sticker was still in good shape. This motor looked pretty well brand new when I got it. And unfortunately, a couple of quick rides in the back of a truck and it uh, doesn't look quite as pretty anymore. It's a shame, but it still runs really good. That's the main thing. A couple more things that I picked up to get ready to use this boat, with our boat safety kit. And uh, this one comes with a flashlight, a whistle, a uh, rescue rope, and a bailing can, and the lid has a reflecting mirror on the inside of it. It meets the, uh, the requirements. They're eh, 10 or 11 bucks in Canada. And uh, definitely, this one comes with a battery for the flashlight, but you do need to make sure that you have a functional flashlight in order for the, uh, this kit to meet the standards. I got a new anchor rope. I don't know how this is going to be. Nylon. Mm, this might be shot in a year. I don't know. Um, I don't know that we're going to necessarily be doing a whole lot of anchoring with this boat. If I am, then I want to get some of uh, this style of rope. These are dock lines. We'll put them on the corners of the boat. You can see there's already some dock lines here, but they're uh, getting pretty ancient and we don't necessarily want to rely on them. So. Put a decent dock line on and um, then we won't have to worry about it. I picked up a new paddle. Uh, this paddle is uh, plastic, obviously plastic with an aluminum handle. And my reasoning for that is that the uh, wood paddles don't tend to last real well if they're out in the weather. And uh, I expect that this is probably going to be out in the weather a little bit. So the uh, paddle probably won't stand up well. I do have a wood paddle here. This is a short little stubby one. I had this uh, for use on um, one of my sea doos at one point and uh, it's kicking around so we may as well use it. Obviously we've got the, uh, the plug that will need to go in before we before we launch the boat 
and a strap for holding down the back of the boat. This one isn't ideal. This is actually one of the ones I use for tying down the razor on the trailer, but it's what I had handy, so that's what I grabbed. I do have a couple of the, the um, kind of lever binder type straps that are specifically designed for boat trailers. It'll attach back here and catch the light bracket or something down there anyways. And uh, I'll use those. They're buried somewhere in the back of the Jeep. I can find one, but not both. So that is it. Uh, oh, I also bought myself a nice new life jacket today. Uh, make sure if you're boating in Canada that your life jacket meets Canadian Transport Canada standards. I think they pretty well, well anything you buy in Canada is going to meet that standard. Um, also, uh, a lot of the ones that you get in the US will as well. But make sure they do because if you do get checked, uh, by the police or game wardens. They'll be looking for that sort of thing. I think we'll end this one here. Call this a success. The motor runs good. The boat is mounted on the trailer. The uh, trailer shouldn't lose a wheel. That uh, bearings look good. And I think other than I need an anchor for this thing and the store that I went to didn't have any in stock. But uh, once we get an anchor, we'll basically be ready to go. And uh, we'll put this thing in the water and I'll give it a try bring you guys along for a ride. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate you taking the time. Give one of those thumbs up if you got this far in the video. If you haven't already done so and would like to see more from my uh, channel, by all means hit the subscribe button. Doesn't cost a thing and uh, helps me out considerably. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next mess. Thanks for watching.